To those EUC enthusiasts that are InMotion loyalists, you can come out of the bushes. Because at last, InMotion has catapulted you guys from the sidelines to the playing field. Gone are the days you loyalists have to sit idly by waiting for the chance to prove your beloved in motion would someday create an EUC that would muscle its way onto the EUC scene and disrupt the lion's share of EUC street dominance that has been for so long reserved for Bego and Layla Lieberkin. And although you guys can now say with your chest that the V13 is that damn wheel, the rest of us are looking at you with shrug shoulders saying, what took you so damn long? But before I get into this review, I would like to thank Free Motion Shop for allowing me the opportunity for testing out the V13 Challenger. If ever you guys are in the market for a new or used EUC and don't want to get took, peruse on over to Free Motion Shop and give them a second look. Their information can be found in the description box below. So without further ado, let's get into this review. There is a fable, the tortoise and the hare, that's befitting of the slow progression of in-motion pioneer move to roll out their first ever high-performing wheel that packs a lot more from a company that kept it slow and steady for the last nine years. While Bagode and to some degree Liebekim exhibited overconfidence, tenacity, and speed in which they doled out their fair share of high-performing EUCs, who knew their just desserts would come off the cusp of the slow and steady likes of emotion? Now don't get me wrong, Emotion is a trusted brand we can arguably agree that fixated their attention more so on the performance of safety above all else, which translated to the EUC streets as a company whose wheels held minion status. So shocked was I when Emotion had a defining moment and decided to step up their game by launching the V13 Challenger that not only boasts free spin speeds in excess of 80 plus miles per hour and had mad torque, but have safety margins in place to prevent cutouts and thermal runaways. Surely they just were gnaw. Out of the box, this unassuming slim thick EUC with all the accoutrements of an in-motion production gives what it is giving, and what it gave was a wheel like no other. With its deviceful technology, unrivaled speed, the latest design, and performance-oriented form, the Challenger has raised the bar and pushed boundaries for all EUCs moving forward. Being in motion's first 126 volt wheel to roll off their assembly line, Notably, they were able to capitalize off the high voltage and get more power into the motor, which is rated at 4,500 watts. And because of this, the Challenger has a no low speed of 87 miles per hour, or in this case, 140 kilometers, making it the fastest EUC thus far. Because we are dealing with in motion, and true to their nature is the big brother we wish we never had, capped the Challenger to a mere 55 miles per hour. And truth be told, some will be lucky to get up to that speed uninterrupted by a gentle reminder you are broaching the speed threshold in the form of a tilt back, which roughly starts at around 52 miles per hour, give or take. Which brings me to the Challenger's range. With its innovative technology, bum was I when all I could muster from it was 59.66 miles with 14% left on the battery. With the specs boasting 124 miles on a single charge, I was left wondering where the heck the remaining 64 miles went. So I started doing a little digging and came across some very small verbiage that required a magnifying glass to decipher. What I uncovered, which isn't shocking, the specs were based off of a ride away in 163 pounds, riding consistently on flat grounds, and temperatures in the mid 70s, at speeds of 15 miles per hour. And seeming how I wasn't riding consistently on flat grounds and temperatures in the mid 70s, nor riding at speeds of 15 miles per hour, would explain away why I was at a 50% deficit according to the specs that is. One saving grace for the piss poor range for me is, because it's capable of taking up to 14 amps of power, it can charge in as little as three hours. With the stock charger, it took close to five hours to fully charge from 14% to 99%. With so much attention to detail that went into the development of the Challenger, the independent suspension system in motion chose to outfit this wheel with, in my opinion, leaves a lot to be desired. The ease in which to inflate the suspension is where the buck stops. Dialing in the rebound is a stab in the dark. Unlike Bagode and Liebekin wheels, who rebound adjustments give you audible cues of a revolution turn, the Challenger, <laughs> well let's just say, free spins clockwise and counterclockwise with no audible cues intact. Accessing the damping requires the removal of its protective cover. Then inserting the damping regulator into the adjustment port. Here I use a screwdriver to adjust the regulator. Turning it clockwise will increase the rebound. Now 
As you can see, doing so, there's resistance from applied force. Turning it counterclockwise will decrease it. As you can see, there's relatively no resistance. So depending on your comfort level will be indicative of how much or how little you turn in either direction. A word of caution, once there's resistance from adjusting the damping, do not force the issue or you will run the risk of damaging it. Now I don't know if this is a bonus feature noteworthy of mention. However, for those riders who aren't a fan of cushy feel the suspension wheel gives, nor the center of gravity from riding higher than their comfort level will allow, the Challenger has the ability of having the suspension struts removed, thus rendering it a non-suspension wheel. The duality of the Challenger's touchscreen makes having it one of those features you may not need, but nice to have. The screen not only allows a rider to monitor speed and battery consumption, but allows for adjustments to the settings without having to access an app. This feature's ease of use and responsiveness makes it more practical to use than whipping out a phone to access settings via an app. With each new rollout of wheels, the one accessory that's more transient than the wheels themselves are the footrests. Whether any one particular design can be held the best above the rest is left up to the opinion of the rider. And in my opinion, I can do without the Challenger's footrests. The raised foot stopper, as I refer to the rubber piece, is a hindrance. As a rider who transitions into different riding styles throughout the course of riding, I'm constantly shifting my feet to accommodate the angle of my body, and with the foot stopper positioned on the outside edge of the footrest and raised, I'm finding I don't have free motion of my feet to maneuver them outwards, so I'm constantly wiggling them to get them in the position that's conducive for the move I'm going in, which is counterintuitive at high speeds. Where I find these stoppers shine are during cornering and tight turns. It's no secret in-motion safety consciousness is the byproduct for which they design their wheels around. Barring the fact the Challenger may have features riders can be critical of, the fact remains it's a wheel that makes every ride a safe ride, which has yet to be seen by other manufacturers. In addition to that, the wheel offers a rider a gambit of features not currently seen on the market. You get speed and torque without having to compromise one over the other. The BMS system is supposed to be one of the most advanced systems outfitted in the EUC wherein it uses the algorithm to optimize the use of capacity and charging cycles in the long run. A rider is allowed to check the status of every parallel cell which is also monitored by the motherboard. The redundant hull sensor system controls the motor more accurately. In case one fails while riding, the other can take over, thus preventing a cutout. In closing, I can continue to talk about the bullet points of what differentiate the Challenger from the competition, but you guys didn't sign up for that. Overall, the wheel's performance was shockingly good. It did for me what it set out to do. Reach speeds in the 50s were effortless, barring wind gusts of course, and was a blast to achieve knowing the wheel had my back and wouldn't cut out. Getting there, however, the wheel was understandably sluggish, but once it got going, the acceleration from the torque assist made up for the sluggish start. Pushing a wheel uphill wasn't cumbersome nor a challenge at all given the weight of the wheel, which brings me to its control. Once my body adapted to the Challenger, it was a blast to whip around, descend stairs, pop curbs, and do those things we typically do on EUCs. Although this wheel is capable of so much more in the speed category, in motion capping the Challenger is their way of saving us from ourselves. Speaking from one who had a cutout on an RSS at 49.5 miles per hour, if they giveth, we will taketh. With that being said, we've come to that part of the video wherein you guys know what time it is. Hit that like button, subscribe, comment, good, bad, or indifferent. So until next time guys, deuces.